Good morning, YouTube. The values on Tesla Cybertrucks are crashing. Owners are reporting issues. And uh, Tesla has stopped delivery, supposedly, on all new Cybertrucks. And despite all that, I still want one in April. Thinks I'm nuts. You are crazy. But I feel terrible, though, because I thought the values was going to stick. Like, when we were doing earlier videos, I'm like, they're just going to skyrocket. Everyone's going to want them. And you're like, no chance, no, no way. And of course, you're right. I'm wrong. I will admit it. I'll say it. You were right. So in the first quarter, they sold about 3,000 Cybertrucks. Or they sold a lot more, but they made deliveries of 3,000. There's mm -hmm. supposedly a million people that have a deposit, including me, but I'm pretty far along now. I did the deposit day one when they unveiled the Cybertruck, and Elon had that guy throw the ball at it and broke the window. Right. And I finally got the invite to configure December 29th. Last week, I made a video complaining about my configuration not being assigned a VIN yet, right. despite so many other people in line after me, because they live in California or Texas, uh, getting favored and getting their cars. Well, I sat and waited and was just really mad, and it turns out it's because Texas is the easiest to deliver the cars because that's where they're made. Right. And California, they get a kickback from the government. They get money for everyone they sell no, in California. No, no, Elon secretly loves California. He says he doesn't, but when we were out there a couple weeks ago, there are tons of, I've never seen tons one in person except for California. They're all over. Elon, I know you secretly love LA. But the day that I posted that video, mm -hmm. complaining about it right. and talking about the Grenadier, I got a VIN. <laughs> Somebody's I got watching. assigned a VIN. Big but, Brother's watching. Uh, I'm probably not going to get one anytime soon. Normally it'd be a few days to two weeks max before you get delivered the Cybertruck, but I may not be getting it anytime soon. Okay. But we'll, we'll get the price crashing first here. Okay. We had a great interview with John Clay Wolf, who was the first person to sell a Cybertruck at auction with Give Me the VIN. It was right. dealer only, $244,500. Right, which I thought was cheap. Like, everyone wanted to get their hands on one. No, no, a Porsche <laughs> dealer bought it and listed it for more. And they may have sold it because I don't see it anymore, but it seems like it was a bad idea. Because what do you think the next week? There was two more that sold. Right. At keep least going down. 50,000 less. You're right? right on the money. Okay. So two more he had for the following week. They sold for 195, five, mm -hmm. and then 189,000. Wow. Okay. And then there was one the week after that. So we're talking about, uh, you know, getting into mid-March. Right. $175,000. And then one more. This is getting on two or three weeks ago now for $171,000. That's rough. So that's a seventy or eighty thousand dollar dip in a matter of three weeks. Yeah, that's insane. But because these people were willing to take the early risk in selling theirs, mm -hmm. because you sign a waiver when you order the Cybertruck saying you can get fined fifty thousand dollars or more if you flip your Cybertruck within right. the first year. But these brave people sort of set the precedent. It didn't seem like they were getting pursued by Tesla, even right. though we had the interview with Rich saying they're petty and they definitely will. Mm -hmm. um, it opened up the floodgates. Right. And there are cars listed everywhere. But as far as auctions go, cars and bids, they do had three mm -hmm. pass through. Two didn't sell. One for 158, so it keeps dropping. Okay. 145, no sale. And then one finally sold here, 4-8, so April 8th, for $146,000. Okay. So that's a hundred grand off right. in a month Ooh. in Cybertruck flipping. Never have I ever seen something like this. Can we see what the reserve was? Can we call Doug? Uh, see what they yeah, wanted they for Yeah, they don't disclose it. the reserve, but uh, who knows. <laughs> And there's one to bring a trailer, March 30th, 2024, that sold for $160,000. That is rough. So are you thinking that it's going to kind of plateau here, or is it just going to keep going down? I don't know. You look on Auto Tempest right now, which is the best place to search for a used car online. Perfect for this, even if they right. weren't sponsoring this video, which thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring. They would be great to look at current cyber trucks for sale because they combine all the major listing sites into one search. You can't really search by color with cyber trucks, but any other car you can or whatever options. They're all foundation series. There are a few cyber beasts in here. And if you look on Auto Tempest, they range from as cheap as 159,000 asking price. Hmm. There's one that's at auction right now. I believe that is, yeah, that's the cars and bids listing. So by the time this posts, it'll be near done or done. But 159.9 is the cheapest, and all the way up to 229,999 at Atlanta Autos. Whoa, okay. And there's a few cyber beasts on here. I saw one for just under $200 thousand dollars. So what is the beast? What is this, the different specs on the beast? So the Cyber Beast has a slightly lower range, but it is mm. the much better performing one. It okay. is like the plaid, or not really the pad, like the performance Tesla Model 3 sure. versus the normal one. I'm sure they'll have an even crazier plaid version at some point, uh, but that's that's the other part I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. The market for these Teslas. I still want one. I'm right. still 
waiting for one. I'm supposed to have one within a week to two weeks, but mm -hmm. supposedly Tesla has stopped all deliveries of new Cybertrucks mm -hmm. and they're actually piling up on their lots in their delivery centers because of an issue with the accelerator pedal. That sounds really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, supposedly they just glued down the decorative part of the accelerator pedal. Right. And there's nothing other than this glue holding it on and that will slip and slide up. <gasps> It'll get caught on the trim and then you're stuck at full throttle. No way. And these things are so fast. Yeah. Any electric car is fast. One guy had this happen to him. This is his guess on what's happening with Cybertrucks and why they've stopped it. With the accelerator pedal. It's so scary. Let me show you something interesting about my Cybertruck is that pedal looks different, right? It's this and this. See? So a couple days ago, I'm driving. No. And let me see if I can get a good view here. No. So I'm driving, and this goes here. Mm -hmm. As I'm driving, this slid up. And got caught. And wedged itself. No just way. Like that. So obviously, uh, yeah, you, you don't want that to happen crazy. while you're driving, especially with a snappy acceleration car like this. Especially in the summer too, and in LA, obviously, because they're mm -hmm. all in LA, or maybe that was by design because they're trying to run everyone over in LA and get rid of LA. But that's so scary. And so like I worked with WeatherTech for quite a long time, mm -hmm. uh, traveling all the IMSA series because they're a title sponsor for them. And a huge deal on why their mats, not to be plugging WeatherTech, but they're laser measured. So nothing like this happens because it is so dangerous to get anything stuck under the brake, under the accelerator, any mats that move around or bottles or cans that kind of get under there. That's the most dangerous right. part that could happen. And so for the Tesla to have something, or the Cybertruck to have something this serious is really scary. Well, it's an easy fix. They need to do something other than glue or find a really nice glue supplier <laughs> nice, good, that holds. Glue. And then this won't be an issue. But... It's a 10, 15 minute fix. Maybe you'll wait two hours for the glue to dry. Right. And for that reason, I can't get my Cybertruck right now. <laughs> Poor it you. may have been built. It may be sitting in a lot somewhere just waiting. I have a VIN. It's mine. We'll I, get it. I get it. They shouldn't release it because no. it is very dangerous. This does seem very dangerous. No, there is one YouTuber that got his though, and he filmed his first drive, I guess, pulling out of the lot. Right. And this is a YouTube channel called Gear Down. He is a pilot for celebrities and such. Oh, that's and he cool. just picked up the Cybertruck. <gasps> and you can see. The warning. It's a steering failure. It goes <gasps> all red. He loses all acceleration. It's limited to four miles per hour. He has just driven off with this car. And in seconds, it is broken. This is. I feel like there might be something else going on, like a Christine type of feel to it, where like AI is going to start taking over the world and just driving us wherever it wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's really scary. So that is the current state of the Tesla right. Cybertruck, and I still think they are awesome, and I still really, really want one, but it's looking more like I'm in the crowd that was really into the Chrysler PT Cruiser in 1998, and paying ten to $15,000 over for those, and now they are... Wait, people paid over MSRP? They, they paid over. For the PT Cruiser? Yeah. They paid, they paid did over. You, they thought you? it was really cool. No, I mean, I wasn't old enough to buy one new, but I'm just I'm just comparing it to 25 <laughs> okay. years later, we have a Cybertruck, a very strange looking vehicle right. that people are very enthusiastic about. And, you know, it became a punchline, the PT Cruiser. Right. I don't know, the Cybertruck might stay cool. So like the Hummer H2 became sort of a punchline right. and then came back and it's a big collector now mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because of the era it was in. It was the coolest car for MTV Cribs with the Escalade. We did a video on that recently. But one thing's for sure, my flippability factor of being able to buy this, say I don't like it and be able to sell it, uh, that's a dwindling prospect there as the yeah. prices go down. And when people get tired of foundation series and they go through all the crazy people like me that will pay a hundred grand mm -hmm. for uh, laser etched foundation series and all the options, they'll be offered for 80. Right. And supposedly there's going to be the rear wheel drive normal one that'll be about 50. Right. So then I'll see some real depreciation. I don't know. I, I still think this first year, the first lot to come out is still going to have a little bit of value. And of course, anything this new, this innovative, this new product, there's going to be bugs in it. That's the society we live in. Any new product is going to have some callbacks and. and trouble but the accelerator that's very very serious we just Oof. need to get a lot of duct tape that would be fun <laughs> an immediate hoopty a brand new hoopty for me i mean it's just it's just perfect for you but i'm sure i'll buy one and it will be the most reliable flawless cyber truck ever because 
my content strategy is the opposite, but uh, no, you have we'll see. bad car mojo because my poor Lincoln Town car, the transmission failed, and I feel like it's only guilty from association with you. No, well, apparently it's this little part that controls like the overdrive and the shifts that it's a piece that needs to be replaced with brass that wears out on these AOD couple of year transmissions. No, 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 There's no. been comments in there, I so it's an you. issue. I and then the you. cylinder scoring on the G55 using oil, that was that was just previous owner thing. So yeah, we'll see. I am pretty unlucky though. That's why I have the YouTube channel Hoobie's Garage to document it all. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching.